Um, we're going to go over how to add a new contact, how to do a simple import, go over a couple of different ways to view the list, different ways to search for a contact, how to save a search, and then actually put it on your dashboard, how to add a tag to a contact, a couple of different ways, and take a look at the contact record in detail. <clears throat> and there is a question box there that you are welcome to ask any question you'd like. Um, I try to stop in between little modules and uh, answer the question as much as I as best as I can. All right, so the very first thing I'd like you to um, draw your attention to is the Help Center. This is probably the most important part of the software when you are learning on your own. <clears throat> you already know how to get to the basic training section because you're here in the class. And um, Raquel just asked a question, can you re-import if you forgot a field? And absolutely yes. We'll get to that in just a few minutes and I'll even show you. So in the, you already know how to get to the basic training. Well, there's also some other stuff up here in the little question mark. So if you click on the question mark and go to the Help Center, you have um, instruction manuals here that you can browse for, you also have a user guide, and then videos. So you can click on the user guide and say you want to Look at how to um, do a referral partner report. Well, you click on that, and then you click on maybe the next title that might be closest to it, and you have a step-by-step -step instruction. Or if you're one that needs to learn visually, then you have videos up here, video library. Click on another topic, manage tags, and you can watch a, a cute little video on and it's very short and it's just topic or um, nice quick short topic on that little piece. You also have webinars. So here's the one that you're in now, basic training, and then Infusionsoft Mastermind. If we click on this, it takes you to a listing of all of the past ones. So it's our archive area the latest one, and then if you want to have reminders on a weekly basis of what's coming up, then you can put your information here and register. But what's nice about the Mastermind videos uh, webinars is that it could be something on something as simple as Copywriting 101 that doesn't need to be Infusionsoft based, or a deep dive into how to customize, where did that one go? There was a customize, oh, here we go, order form customization. Of course, that would be Infusionsoft um, specific. So there's a little bit of everything in here from marketing tips to deeper dive into different pieces into the software. You have a community page here, API discussion, feedback, all sorts of things that you can look at. So just keep, keep in mind that you do have a very robust help center. If you come across something and you need to um, submit a, like something's not working the way it's supposed to work or that you think it should be working, you can submit a support case and it goes straight to the development team. You have a, a local user group. Um, I think we have one this Thursday for our area. You have a moderator um, that would be the kind of the yeah, the moderator for the group, and they're in charge of getting information to you on a monthly basis of when they're, when and where this meeting is going to be, and they have a networking group that's kind of fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have here um, ours here at the office, not from an Infusionsoft employee, it's just a user here, and they go through, it's a little bit of networking and also some specific things into the software. So it's very helpful if you have a user group in your area. You also have chat now. So this goes straight to our chat team. Um, you also have phone support. So if you're going to be working on everything in the software but campaigns, go ahead and use the chat. 
But if you're going to be working on a campaign and you have questions, please don't use the chat. I want you to get in there, get on the phone, wait that five minutes or whatever that is to get a person on the phone and ask questions there. You don't want to be frustrated when you're building, when you're in the campaign builder. All right, so there is your help center. <clears throat> You also have a dashboard, and some of you may not um, know that. You have, this is what it looks like. And this is customizable um, according to your needs. So you might have five people on your team, and your, all of your dashboards could look different according to what their daily jobs are or what you need to see. So for me, I have certain things on here. This is recent activity any type of emails that I've sent over the last 30 days or today. So it gives you the different stats on open, <coughs> excuse me, I've been getting over being sick. Um, open rates, clicks, opt-ins, opt-outs, bounces and complaints. And you see how it gets to red complaints right here. This is, um, we want to keep this at zero at all times if we can. We don't want to be sending out emails and having them spam, uh, complain to, uh, to us that we've spammed, spammed them. So I also could get rid of this box if I don't care for it. We have something called Add Widgets, Campaign Reporting, Email Stats, RSS Feed if you have a, a blog or something that you're following, Email, that's the one I just got rid of, Calendar items, custom statistics, this is one I use all the time. Pipeline stages, this would be, if you have a sales team and you're going to be using opportunities, you would want to have a pipeline stage report on your desktop, on your, um, yeah, on your dashboard. Tasks, saved searches and saved reports, usage stats. Contacts, this is just a contact widget that shows you how many contacts you have in your database. And it also has a quick link to do an import from there. Fulfillment jobs. If you have a book that you're selling, you would be able to um, put the book through a campaign, let them click on it. It would then send a fulfillment report to your um, fulfillment center to be able to send out that information. If you're using our shopping cart, all sales reports, and then legacy campaign stats. So there's a lot of things here. If you're wanting, say, the custom statistics, add to dashboard. And all it does is adds a little widget that you can then go look for the search that you have saved and save it here to then have just a little quick little box. You can rename this. It might be some, something specific. And then you click on this little hot link here, and it would show you, and I'll show you a live one here soon, but it would show you a live list of the people that are in that California search. So let's go and <clears throat> let's get away from the dashboard. And what I'm doing is hovering over the upside down arrow. This opens up the navigation board. If I click on edit, all of these little things pop up. I can move them or add to them contacts, maybe I want the campaign builder. This is just my favorites area. Click on done, and there we go. So every time I click on that, or I don't click, it's just going to show this way. So let's get into adding a contact, one at a time. So we have a couple of different ways, actually four, that, that people get into Infusionsoft. The very first way is by this little plus sign. Click on it. And just the bare basics of um, a contact record could be put in there. Maybe you just have a first name and an email address or just an email address. So let's put in Judy. <clears throat> so by putting this in, it's recognizing an email address the minute that at sign goes on there. And this little button pops up and it says, I have permission to send marketing to this address. Well, Judy gave me permission to add her to my newsletter list verbally. We met in the elevator. She says, hey, yeah, send me that information. So I, verb I have verbal, um, verbal permission from her. 
and then we can click on Judy and it would take us to her contact record that's a big full contact record. Now if we have more information that we need to add we're going to go to a different section. Here's the the quick add here. Well the other section is in contacts and then hovering over contacts again to add a contact. And what this does is opens up to the standard add contact form right here. I also have a couple of other forms that you can create but this one is the one that comes by default. So you have as little information as you want. You can um, just an email address if that's all you have or you can fill out everything and have a lot of information which sometimes is very nice to have because the more information you have the more specific you can get in your marketing. So let's say um, this is Dawn and here's our phone number and email address. Now here we go again. I have permission to send marketing to this address. Yes, I got verbal permission and when we hit save then the full contact record is going to be created. Now notice we have a secondary address section here, additional information, additional fields, person notes, and then you would have, you wouldn't have Santa letters and IS consultant survey. These are customized tabs that I've put up, but you would, you would have a um, tab that would say custom fields. So let's go back to this little section here and finish the contact record. So I have permission. I click on save. By clicking on save, it looks like it's that same page, but it's not. It is now the full contact record and we have something called tags that have just appeared as well as all of the information that we're going that we could do to these people. So the stuff above the save button, this little button right here, it's about it's half page. Everything above this is about the person. So where did they come from, who they are, um, company, address, person, person notes. So when we, when we want to know about this person, this is the relationship um, note area. So met at the conference. Um, nice guy. Whatever you'd like to put in there, this is relationship for you only. This is not searchable. It is uh, it just is there for whoever needs to work this contact. Um, Raquel is asking, um, are the tabs at the top the same thing as a campaign you sent to this contact? No. Um, the tabs at the top are just more information for you to have. So when long time ago, four or five years ago, I created a survey for um, the coaches here. And I asked them, there's some other stuff in here too, but I asked them, um, what leadership style motivates you? Important people in your life. How do you like to be led? So I created a survey in one of the campaigns. What they did, I sent it all to them. They clicked on that form. They filled out all the information. And then it all comes back. So if this, if Don was one of my coaches here, then he would have filled all of this information out. And I would be able to see that in his contact record here. So this is just, these tabs here are just information for you. All right, so now we have <clears throat> added a quick contact here, added a full contact here, add a contact. Now another way is to import contacts. So here's one here. Here's the um, one way to do it or we go all the way to admin and we can import data as well. I like this one. It's just my, my habits. So what we have is 
what, what are we importing? Well, we're going to import contacts. And it is through a CSV file. So I have one, I think. I might have to download it again. I cleaned up a bunch of files and I've lost a few things. So let's click on Go. We can watch a video about importing contacts or download a sample CSV file for importing contacts. And this is the one that I have. So let me show that to you. Okay, so I have John Doe, date of birth if I wanted, another field if I needed something in here. We have company name, lead source, job title. Get rid of something we don't need. Contact notes, met at Winter Conference. So this note here is going to go into that contact record person note area. Tags, tags are how we segment our list. So in Infusionsoft, we have one big pile of people. If you use MailChimp or Constant Contact or iContact, any of those, you're going to have several different lists. They're all named something different. I might be on your A list and I might be on your Z list. But when you put them all into Infusionsoft, it's backwards. It's just turn that around. Everyone's in one list, but you have a bunch of different names or tags. So tags are um, a label. So you can have as many tags as needed. Um, and only 100 custom fields. So keep that in mind if you have a lot of fields that you need. Tags are unlimited. Um, custom fields are 100 per uh, for the contact record. So contact notes, this goes into the person notes, tags. And there's a little note here that says multiple tags can be entered and separated with a comma. So if you'll notice this, we have prospect, newsletter, and event attendee. And this is just in a tag um, field. So tags is the header, prospect, newsletter, and event attendee is the tag. And by putting a comma in between every word, when we import this, then a tag will be created by in that name for John. And for Mindy, the newsletter, comma, customer, though she will be a newsletter comic um, customer. She'll have those tags. Then we have just some general information over here. Email addresses, websites, addresses, multiple addresses. <clears throat> All right, so let's browse. And we want to look for the people sample. click on next and what this is doing is showing in my fields on the left and Infusionsoft on the right. So it's showing first name equals first name. It's noticing these. It's acknowledging that that's the same thing. So date of birth, birthday. That works. Um, something. I had already used this, this field prior to this and so maybe I don't want to import this field this time. So let's do not import this field. We have a question. Um, is a tag, so is a tag, is what group you want the contact in? Yes, it is. Um, if, if Don was wanting to get my newsletter, he would have a newsletter tag. If he was a prospect, he would have a prospect tag. And I'll show you some more examples in a minute. Um, another question, can we have tags on multiple columns in Excel when importing? Yes, you can. You just have to have that same name, tags, at the top of, of your field header. Um, example, sus suspect, general contract, general contractor, or prospect. Yes, those are, those are good examples of what you would want. Okay, so once we get all of the fields mapped, we have tags here. This is my header, and it's saying create a tag from your field value. Well, when you do it, it's going to look like this. 
until you map it. So you're doing create a tag from field value for a tag field. Everything else matches up. <clears throat> that looks good. And click on next. And then it's going to say, does my United States match yours? Yes, it does. And here's the most important part. Do you plan on sending email information or email marketing to these contacts? Well, in my case, I want to, yes. And how did they become contacts of yours? So 90% of mine have filled, a form, filled out a form on my website. Um, a couple have purchased from me. But that does not give me permission to send information to them if they just purchase something. So in that, in that communication that I've sent to them, they would have had to click on something that says, yes, I want to be part of that email marketing campaign or that newsletter that you're going to be sending. Maybe 10 have attended an event. They signed up at my booth. And again, here is something else. We need to be careful not to just take information from an event or a, or a uh, show, what do you call them? Well, you, have, you get the idea. Uh, I just lost the word. So you don't want to just add their name to your mailing list because they didn't give you express permission unless they signed up at your booth that says, I'm going to add you to my newsletter list or my blog list or you're entering this campaign, blah, blah, blah. Personal interaction, business card. And while we're on the business card idea, um, one thing I forgot to tell you in the very beginning, we have a mobile app, Infusionsoft Mobile. And inside that mobile app, there is something called Snap, which is kind of, it's really fun to use. Um, you download the uh, Infusionsoft Mobile on your smartphone. There is an, I, there is an Apple, you can call that iOS? No. Apple Store, and then there's a, um, the Google Play Store. You can just download it for free. Now, inside that um, phone application, there's something called Snap, and you take a picture of a business card, which then will add the contact to Infusionsoft. Um, it goes off into transcription first, then it comes back and says, yes, you may um, add this, take a peek at it, make sure that the business card transcribed properly, got all the information you want, and then sends it on to uh, maybe some type of a get to know you, or it was nice to know you campaign, some type of a, ner a networking follow-up. You can take, I think it's 175, maybe 150 um, business card pictures a month. It might be a little more, but I heard a rumor that it was about, about that. And I haven't, I haven't done my due diligence on that to find out. <clears throat> so then we go on to say, which service provider have you been sending this list through? Well, I have been using MailChimp. What methods of opt-in have, have you been using? Single. How long have you been emailing or building this list? For about two years. And when was the last time you sent to the list? Well, I missed my April newsletter. I didn't get that sent out. So one to three months. And how many emails per month will you be sending? One to five. And who are these people to you? So this is my current list. And you have to tell Infusionsoft who they are. And this is just kind of looking at a little review before we finish. So it tells us all the information and did it match up to the fields we wanted them to be in. So contact notes, this goes into that, that um, person note area, tags, prospect, newsletter, and event attendee. All of, these, all of those worked just fine. Now, this is where we can add a group tag or a mass tag. So run some actions, we click on this, click on this drop down, we're going to create an action all the way up to the top says apply or remove a tag. Now if you'll notice with all of these people that we have sitting in the um, in that list 
we could create an appointment, cancel a subscription, copy actions, create an order. All of these things could happen to all of these people that are sitting in the queue. But for this purpose, we just want to apply a tag. Scroll down, and we can create a new tag on the fly here, or pick one of the tags in here. So let's look for my, I think I have a newsletter one. It doesn't really matter. We'll just call it grandchild. There we go, and save. And done. Now it's what it's doing is saying add or apply one tag, the grandchild tag, to all of these people. Click on done. Then we can look at the list we just imported. We hover over John. This one's garbage. But we hover over John, and we can see this little bar pop up. And this one is a quick, this is just called the quick action, or maybe kind of like inline editing. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's just kind of, I call it an action, quick action stuff. So what we can do is leave a note or create a note, create a task, create an appointment, send an email right from here, quotes and orders, and then tags. So John Doe has what tags associated to him. <clears throat> so today is the 16th. So that is always going to be a default tag that gets applied is when you're importing. Event attendee, there we go, grandchild, newsletter, prospect. And this is just associated because I've used this before, I've used him before. So Mindy, let's look at her tags. Grandchild. So she was added a grandchild as well because we used a mass tag apl application. Now, let's look at this list. Let's do a new search first, and I'll show you the, the list, um, what it looks like. So new search, and we're going to look at the people that came to or that signed up for the barbecue for our class reunion. I look up MHS Contacts Family Friendly Outdoor Barbecue. I sent out a, a, a survey last year. Um, to all of my high school mates that I wanted to kind of get an idea of what they wanted to do for our reunion. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what year we reunion, I'll just tell you how old I am. Um, but it's our for our class reunion. So they were able to click on things in the form to give me this information. So let's do a search. And 61 people wanted to have an out outdoor barbecue out of the 100 people that filled out the survey. But I also gave them a couple other options. So it was a family-friendly barbecue. It was a dinner and dancing. And another one was um, a mixer. And two days. Did we want it two days or just one day? So I got a lot of information. If I click on Maria's tags, she filled out the survey. She wanted the, either the family-friendly barbecue or she was also good with a meet and greet at the, bar, um, at the restaurant on Friday night. She was planning on attending and she wanted to be part of my committee. So I knew all of that information just by her completing that form, that survey that I, I sent out to them. And April is asking, how do you run a survey in Infusionsoft? Um, it's, not a, it's, not, it's not like SurveyMonkey, is that what it's called? Survey Monkey. It's not uh, a survey form itself. We create it. We make it that way. So it's a web form that we add some for some fields to that make it so that they can answer the information and then it goes into their contact record and we can add tags and such. Um, with Judy on Thursday, she's going to be teaching you the campaign builder and you can ask her to if you can attend that one, you can ask her to create a form for you and um, see what the see what that might look like. 
get a little instruction on how to do that. So now that we know that these people are all the barbecue people, we can save this search because I want to be able to put it on my dashboard. So this is my AZ High School BBQ. I'm saving it by this name and save. Now by doing that, it lands it up here in my saved searches. There's my barbecue. I have a whole bunch of other ones too because I teach this class. I use this one as an example all the time. <laughs> so my AZ High School Barbecue, that's my new search. Now let's do another search. Let's use a name. So let's, I want, I want to find out everybody with the first letter M. Starts with equals, not equals, ends, contains, and doesn't contain. So everyone that starts with an M, I want to search for. I have 212 people. So I could do a saved search here. Name starts with M. Save it. Now, coming over here, we're going to go to our dashboard. And I really need to know who, their who is on my list that starts with an M. So we are going to add a widget right here. Campaign reporting, no. Custom statistics, this is my favorite one. It's nice and clean on the dashboard. So we're going to go to it's a saved search. I want to know how many. And I, it's in my contact category. And it is my AZ High School Barbecue for one. Save and add. So maybe you had several searches that you want to put in this widget. Let's do another contact search. And it was name starts with an M. You see I used it another time. And save. Now, I can look at this at any time. It's easy to see. I can click on the 212 and it takes me straight to this list, the quick action view. Now there's a couple of different views here. One is this way, so you can take action upon them as you're going through. Or you click on this little um, these little lines over to the right, and it gives us just a list view. It's not clickable. You can send emails, but that's it. You also have the option to bring in the information to look different in here. So let's edit the criteria. We're going to change some of the columns. So I like the first name, last name, and phone, and email. But I don't think I need state anymore, or country, or owner. Let's add birthday and their Facebook. What else? And their lead source. So I want to know where they came from. Click on OK. And now this list looks completely different. So this person here, Michelle, filled out a form for me on Facebook. That's how she, she came into Infusionsoft. Maria did the same. Maka filled out a form that I created. So this is very helpful for me to find out where these people came from, what the lead source is. But it doesn't allow me to do anything with the contact other than email them. That's why I like the other list better, personally. This is just easier to, if you're working a list. So I do my search that these 212 people I have to contact in the next couple of days. I have a search already done for them. All I have to do is click on that 212 on the dashboard and it takes me straight to them that then I can take action. So if I need to call them or send them an email, whatever that is, I can take that quick action and move on. Or add a quick tag when I get done talking to them. Or fill out a form. 
an internal form, which then can send them straight into a campaign or see what campaigns they're associated with. Let me see if I can find one that someone might be. I don't think I have anyone in campaigns. But you would be able to see active campaigns, recent and upcoming. So what you've what we've kind of <coughs> excuse me, what we've learned is that you can add a contact here, contact here. Hover, add a contact. Here again is the import contact or import data. We did the import. We then did a saved search, two saved searches. We put, put them on our dashboard. If you're done with that search, all you have to do is click out of it. If Two days down the road, you want to see an updated, um, well, a couple hours down the road, you want to see updated numbers. You're going to go up here to refresh because if someone is, is filling out a form, tags are going to be changing. You want to see all of that. Um, what else have we gone over? The import. So Raquel was asking about the import, how we would be able to fix that. So on Import data, we also have a data cleanup. And this one says, look at previous imports. What we're doing, we can either view this import that we just did, or we can roll it back. And rolling it back takes out all of the tags, it takes out all of the fields that you just put in. So now, it's cooking right here. It's gone. We're, we're done. So Raquel, that's how you would get rid of that to then turn around and recreate that import. And what you're doing is just creating another field in your file first, in the CSV file, with a header, and then you're mapping that header to a custom field. And in, let's take a peek at that again. And remember, in here, if I needed a custom field, it's going to say it right here, special field options. So it says add a custom field. And then you're going to name it. So this would be first given name. I'm just making it up here. It's a text field, or it could be date, list box, a radio button, text area. Just depends on the information that's in there. We'll leave it a text box. And was it required? Yes. And save this field. So now, first name is going into the custom field area. It's not going to be on the first page. It's going to be in one of those tabs in the contact record. Does that make sense, Raquel? Okay. All right. So now we've done a little bit of all of that, all of the, the contacts, how they get into Infusionsoft. Let's talk about the contact record itself. So let's go find somebody. Let's look at, well, we'll go into, I want to find someone that has information in there. Maybe me. Uh, not much. Okay, so what we have is, again, the full contact record. Additional addresses, additional information, person notes. Remember, this is not searchable. Custom fields, if needed. Now, let's go beyond this information and look lower. You'll notice I have a confirmed email address. This says that I have a golden email address. It is... Um, double confirmed. 
So when you're asking people to sign up for a newsletter, that next, um, if you want confirmed, that next email they would get would say, thank you so much for signing up for my newsletter. Uh, please confirm your email address. And it allows them to click on that and it would confirm their email address. It does not have to be confirmed to be able to receive um, news or email from Infusionsoft. Um, it can say unconfirmed and that's totally marketable. That's fine. Um, Milan has a question. How can I import all automation and all complete, completely date, date completely date from Active Campaign to Infusionsoft. I have no idea, Milan. Um, that one is, you might have to call tech support on that, but to get out of uh, Active Campaign, you're going to have to figure out how to export all of your information into a CSV file. And automation, I don't think you can. I don't think there's a way to do that. You'll have to set up new automation inside Infusionsoft. Um, but we can take that offline as well. And I can see if I can find someone to help you with that. <clears throat> or to answer questions at least. So let's go beyond down here. Look at the what we do with people section. Not who they are. That's all. Who they are is above the save. Who, what we do with them is below. So tasks, scored and recent activity, follow-up sequences, campaigns, opportunities, orders, web profile, and file box. Tasks and appointments, completed tasks, previous appointments, notes, form submission, and recent email history. So let's look at these notes compared to person notes up here. Person notes, again, is not searchable. It's not date stamped or anything. It's just a pile. Re again, it's relationship building notes. Who are they? Now we go down here. These notes are actionable notes. So we can come over and say add note or view all or note template. Let's add a note. And we'll pick the template, to, um, free consultation completed. Type, it was an appointment. Title, free consultation completed. And they completed their free consultation. So all of that is automated. It's all pre-populated because I created a template. So if I want to notify someone, send a blind carbon copy and save. Now... The notes are date stamped, we know who the user was, and the latest notes, these are working notes, free consultation completed, what's next? By using that template, automation can happen everywhere else in the software. So the minute um, we have something called an action set, or you put it a template into um, a campaign. And the minute this action is, is taken care of, then a campaign could start with them as well. You'll learn that on Thursday. Form submission. This is another way something can create um, automation. Form submission on 126.17, I filled out the caregiver form. I created it, system created it, and it was from this application. These are the inf these are the emails I've I've been sent, and it shows if I've unopened or clicked on something. Campaigns. Let's take a look at that. Again, it's the same as that inline um, the quick action view of that list. Active sequences, recent campaign history or upcoming opportunities. If you are um, needing or if you have a sales team of maybe four or five or more, you're, you might want to use opportunities. Um, and it's the, you would have to have that version of Infusionsoft to be able to use that. But what it is are stage moves. So if you have a 
10-stage process from um, lead capture to the completion of a sale, you want to have different stages that you can name and create automation in, in, um, in between them. So, and it's very easy to um, create reports and follow and your, do your, your, daily, your daily tasks and processes when you are using opportunities. We have orders if you're using e-commerce through Infusionsoft, a web profile, so this shows view the date, the URL of last visited, and the time and, and date or uh, time and date stamp, and then what I'm using. So date created, OS, browser, plugins, all of those things. It's kind of cool. Then we have a file box. So if I needed my, con my contacts to fill out a form, um, a paper form, they would be able to print it off and then scan it back to me and I can attach it to Dawn's file right, right away uh, or a contract or something like that. All right, does anyone have any questions? Let's look real quick at where the tags live. So yes, we know that they live in the contact record on, on these people here, but where do they really live? Where's the back end? So CRM in settings. We have tag categories. And let's say I want to find all of my MHS um, my MHS tags that I'm using. So what this is showing me is this is the category of those tags and I have 30 tags in the MHS category. So let's go to the tags. And see what where the tags are. <clears throat> So I want to find all of the tags that are the MHS. So we're going to go up to the category, MHS contacts. I have 30 of them, and this will tell me how many needed just a single, a single ticket or have paid for the dinner, who's bringing a guest, who's wanting to go to the mixer only. So all of those things I would be able to find out and tag them. So, yes, on the reunion committee, I can see how many people own this tag. How many people wanted our reunion in September? So, this is a very um, effective way to keep your tags organized by creating a category for them. So that when you go to do a search, I'll give you an example of why it's nice to have the... Um, have the list. So I have tons of tags in here, just lots and lots. Most of it's junk. What I'm wanting to find out is, me. I don't remember the tag name, but I know the category it's in. So I want to find out, find all my MHS um, tags. So all I did was type in MH, MHS. So now I can find the one that rings a bell. So bringing a guest and search. So that is very helpful. Um, Mylan is asking, which, ca which languages are possible in Infusionsoft? Only English. No, um, there are other languages, and I, will, uh, I can send you a, a link to find out what they are. And then Manu is asking, get my glasses on, I can't see. What's the difference between tags and categories, and how would you use it? So, Manu, categories are kind of the um, umbrella. Yeah, I would say they're just the higher level view of what that, cat that tag is. 
So this was a good example for MHS being my high school. I just wanted to keep all of those tags associated to um, that one category. So let's look at some others. CRM settings, tag categories. So you can have customer tags, coaching tags, um, e-subscription. What's another one? Jobs, referral partner tags, functional tags, things that tags that do things, um, prospect nurture. Again, minor kind of bad examples because I use them for teaching a lot, but uh, and kind of play with it a lot. So here would be the on behavior. Behavior is a category um, because we want to follow what they're actually doing by their tags. So in tags, in a, maybe a campaign, we would want to uh, tag them, and I'll show you. Let's go in Campaign Builder, and let's go into the Caregiver Free Report. This is just a made-up one. In, and this might be gibberish to you so far, but here is the form. They come to your website. They click on this form. It says 20 questions to ask before hiring a caregiver. They give you their information. They say send the report. They get a pop-up thank you. And you get notified. Now let's move away from the form. As soon as we come into here, this tag is applied. So what we have is requested the free report, which is inside, that would be a behavioral tag. They've requested it, they're doing something for it. We deliver that free report, wait a couple of days, we send them a reminder that has that free report in it, a couple of days, here's that last chance. But if they've already clicked on it in that first email, they're not going to get the rest of these emails. Because when they click on it, it takes them out of this sequence, pulls them out, and sends them into a follow-up sequence to then apply more tags. So downloaded the free report now, and also they get a newsletter tag. So now this guy, whoever came through, they filled out the caregiver report, they, they requested it, then they downloaded it. So they're going to have two tags on them. You could then add a tag here that remove, I mean, add a, add a uh, action here that removes the requested tag, requested free report. So now we would be able to put a search on your dashboard that said requested free report and downloaded free report to see what your conversion is, how many people requested it, and how many people actually downloaded it. So those things would be in your behavior category. So I hope I explained that well enough. Does anyone else have any other questions? I'm going to put my email address in the chat window. and Judy. And if you have questions, you're welcome to email either one of us. Um, we'll send you to the right person. She teaches the send emails, the broadcasting and the template builder tomorrow at 10 o'clock Pacific. And then the campaign builder, which plays in here, um, on Thursdays at 10. So please come if you can. If not, you will also get the recordings from last week. So we'll get this one sent to you for today, as well as um, if you can't make it to tomorrow or Thursday, you'll have last week's YouTube videos. It's a YouTube link that we, that we archive it on every week. So if no one else has any questions, I just wanted to say, say thank you for spending your time with me today, and I hope that you've learned. Um, and you've asked some really good questions, and uh, just let me know if you need anything. Thank you so much, 
and have a great rest of your day or night or wherever you are. Bye-bye.